Professor Stephen Chan is a professor of world politics at the School of Oriental and African Studies at the University of London. He was in Zimbabwe last week to observe the elections. Just before the poll, he was supported by the ZANU-PF government before the elections. Professor Chan, good afternoon to you and thank you for your time. You saw some of the preparations before the elections. You would have seen the comments by the SADC observer missions and other observer missions. How do you assess the elections? Can anyone see the outcome as legitimate? I don't think the outcome can be regarded as credible. I don't think the outcome can be regarded as legitimate, given all of the suppressions that were put into the frame. In other words, there seemed to have been a very deliberate effort to ensure not only that there would be a victory for the ruling party, but that it would have been impossible for the opposition to challenge strongly. In the past, we've seen European Union and other observer missions saying the polls there were not free and fair. But SADC, in his preliminary findings, says that there are big questions. How significant is that, that SADC has not given these elections the all clear? It's very, very significant. And don't forget the African Union was hardly enthusiastic either. It means that there is a mood in Southern Africa, but also in many other African countries, that elections should be taken seriously, they should be transparent, and they should be fair. So there is a definite dismay, I think, throughout Southern Africa, that these elections were so visibly not free, not fair, not proper, and I think that they cannot be regarded as credible, that the result cannot be taken as legitimate. What's changed? Has SADC changed? Has ZANU-PF just gone too far this time? I mean, in the past there's been evidence against ZANU-PF, and yet the AU and SADC sort of accepted them. I mean, they might not have wanted to, but they did. Look, you've got functioning democracies north and south of Zimbabwe, Zambia to north, South Africa to the south. You've got a new mood that elections mean something. There were elections that were free and fair in Zambia a year ago. There's going to be elections next year in South Africa, which we also expect to be open and transparent. So the whole idea is that the region is starting to take the whole process of choice seriously. Uh, to have the man in the middle, as it were, Zimbabwe, spoil the party, being the odd person out, being economically the anchor that drags down the economic performance of the region, and now the anchor that drags down the democratic reputation of the region. All of these things mean something in the capitals of surrounding countries. I've seen a report that the Zimbabwean government, uh, which seems to be furious with SADC, as I'm sure you know, um, wants SADC to change its report. I think the phrase that they put was to correct its mistakes. Can SADC really do that? I mean, one of the issues is around the voters' role, and the voters' role was not made available to opposition parties, and that might be the finding of the preliminary report, but it can hardly be changed in the final report. I think the final report is not going to be changed. The preliminary findings will very, very much feature in the final report. Of course, at that point in time, when the final report is presented to SADC, uh, the president of Zimbabwe, um, elected properly or not, will be given a position to respond. No doubt also uh, the leader of the opposition will be seeking to respond. There will be much debate about the report, but I don't see the final report as greatly changing the findings of the preliminary report. What happens now? I mean, it's one thing for the SADC mission to say to opposition parties, you must go to court. But I don't think, but even the SADC mission seems to uh, have some space for criticism of the courts. The judiciary in Zimbabwe tends to rule with ZANU-PF. There's a great example of this before the elections, as I'm sure you're aware. Twelve um, candidates for MPs from the Coal Citizens Coalition for Change in Bulawayo were told they could not contest because they had missed the deadline when even the Zimbabwean Electoral Commission said they had met the deadline. So the judge essentially made up their own facts. If you don't have a judiciary, what other options can the opposition choose? Basically, it's unlikely, as you say, that a judicial challenge will be successful. Even so, it should be made, because the international community will be watching closely. And this will impact upon the international community's future dealings with the government of Zimbabwe. It will be very, very clear that 
Things like sanctions are not going to be lifted. And I think that even in countries that Zimbabwe regards as friendly towards it, even in China, there were some raised eyebrows about just how clumsy this election was and how nakedly favoring the government this election was. In other words, the lack of subtlety is added to the lack of plausibility and credibility. Is there room for the opposition parties to work with ZANU-PF in Zimbabwe? I mean, key to this would be trust, and there isn't much trust. I don't think there's going to be any grand coalition. There's not going to be any great, as it were, coming together of the parties. And I think that many people would like to see the government of national unity. I think that former President Chisano of Mozambique uh, would like to see that, but it's not going to happen. It's going to be business as usual in terms of government on one side and opposition on the other side. And we're going to basically have a Zimbabwe where divisions of a political nature are going to very much continue along with the continued economic degeneration of Zimbabwe. This government, which has now won the elections, has presided over unprecedented economic decline. It's got no plans for the future that are realistic in lifting the country out of this decline. So we're going to have a very, very sad spectacle of an unsuccessful Zimbabwe basically staggering through into some form of the future. Professor Stephen Chan, thank you. Professor of World Politics at the School of Oriental and African Studies in the UK.